Hey friends! Today is all about removing soda ash because I'm taking photos for my Etsy page so I need things to look the best they can. Now these ones I've already done and I'm just going to show you some close-ups of before and after. So these are my bars of tea tree mint soap before I do my process to remove the soda ash. And these are my bars of the exact same soap, goat milk tea tree mint, after the ash has been removed. Again, this is what it looked like before. Okay, so this is my method for removing soda ash. The reason I use this method is it's free of cost, it doesn't cost me anything, and it works. And um, if you are cautious, it's safe. If you're not cautious, you can burn yourself. So you have got to be careful. Now here's the this, this steam, right? Um, my hand is safe as long as I'm not in the steam. So I have three different angles I work at here. I get this side here and you can see it working. Um, you'll actually see the ash bubbling up. There, it's bubbling now. So I know I'm doing a good job there. I'm nowhere near the steam. My hand is perfectly safe. And I need to get the top. Maybe I'll get this side. So this side's just the exact same thing. I'm at an angle and my hand and my arm are nowhere near the steam. Now it's starting to get a bit slippery on the soap. So I could either put this soap down and do another one or I'm just cautious here with getting the top. Top is at this angle. Look, I'm nowhere near the steam. I'm not at risk of burning myself. So if you're gonna use this method, you have got to be very careful. And actually my husband and I, here we go, I'm done. We don't use this kettle. <laughs> We're not really kettle people. Um, I just had a comment on another video about the microwave. We're microwave people. Usually, if we're gonna, we drink coffee, and if your coffee's cooled down, we, you know, we nuke it for 20 seconds. If you're not a microwave person, you're not a microwave person, but I'm a child of the 70s. I'm not scared of the microwave. I'm scared of things like nuclear bombs and I don't know what else. Not scared much. I can see it working. Now, what I just sprayed, that this is alcohol, so I do spray the top with the spritz. Now, I could do, I could remove all the soda ash with isopropyl alcohol, but look at how, um, how much I've left, not much. I live in a town where you can't readily go out and buy rubbing alcohol. They have it at the counter, you have to go and ask at the counter, and I don't know, you know, they don't, they don't, they're not going to sell it to people that they think are drinking it. So they probably look at the whites of my eyes and actually when I ask for it, I tell them I'm, that it's for bat bombs, that's what I say. Because that's really what I use it the most for. So I'm looking for the highest content alcohol, rubbing alcohol you have because I'm making bat bombs. I'm not drinking it. And then uh, often all they have is 70. There's one pharmacy 60 kilometers away from where I live in another town that has like 95. So I'm actually going to be in that town this week. I'm going to see if I can pick some up. Um, and then there's Everclear. They sell Everclear. Costs more. So I'm trying to keep my costs down only for the reason of not charging or, you know, keeping costs down for my customers. Not for the reason of my own profit. Um, you know, that's, you know, I'm not doing this for free, but I'm also not getting rich. There, so I, so I do just that one spritz on top. And I feel that that keeps it from coming back. Like these are hot now and I put in the alcohol and it, it really eats at the last of the soda ash that the steam didn't get. And you also shouldn't do this right away. Let the, if you, if you have soap that's developing soda ash, let it finish. Like it might take a few weeks before it's done the 
chemical reaction that's forming the soda on top. You know, it's just, um, I find this is happening a lot with my goat milk soaps. And my goat mix, milk soaps are saponifying hotter. So it has to do with heat. And this is extra, extra soda coming to the top. That's what I think. I've read all kinds of different theories about the soda ash. That's, that's what I think from my experiences. It has to do with heat. Not every soap gets it. All my milk soaps seem to. And uh, this is no problem. I'm relaxing and enjoying myself. It's a Saturday morning. I don't know if you can see the bubbling from there. You can see it bubble. So once again, my hand and my arm are nowhere near this steam. Far away. It's up to you to decide if you feel you can do this safely. If not, the other option is rubbing it off physically. Now I can't do that because I do all this piping on top. I can't get in the crevices and spraying the heck out of it with alcohol. And if you can afford that, if you have the source of alcohol, go ahead, where I live I don't. So that's my story and I'm just gonna share with you how I do this. Because I'm gonna photograph these today. I'm not, I'm not uh, packaging them yet. I'm gonna give it a, another week. I'm doing the photos. My husband and I are traveling uh, from January in the last week of January. So if I want something done for February, I need to get it done now. Can't do much soap wise when we're on the road. Hey kitties, get along. Get along now. You're fighting over one kitchen chair where I left my bathrobe. It's become the prime location. It does look cozy. All right, so that's it. I've done four, and I'll show you the improvement in these close up. And I hope that you enjoyed this, and this method may or may not be for you. Once again, I cannot stress enough. Be very, very careful with steam. I have actually, while working in a kitchen, gotten a steam burn, and it was nasty. Um, you're not going to get that with this, right? Look, I'm not getting burnt. Um, I got burnt where in a second skin was gone off my arm. So, you know, this isn't like high pressure steam cooker, which is what I burnt myself on. Um, but still, you can, you can hurt yourself with this, so be careful. All right, thank you, and um, I hope that this was helpful to you. I see a lot of questions about soda ash, and I had a lot of questions about soda ash. I learned to do this from reading someone's description. I didn't see it. Someone described it. And I think she was using a clothing steamer. Yeah, she said steam removes ash, so this is what I invented on my own. I didn't see this. I said, okay, you know what? I can use the kettle, and I have all these choices of angles, and my husband and I don't use the kettle. <laughs> There's soap around it now, <laughs> so... Um, this is now a soap kettle. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.